In this video I'm going to try the nose clip for the first time on the Nissan chassis that I've got here going up. Hey how's it Oaks and welcome back and a special welcome to the new subscribers very happy to have you guys on board so if you don't you know me yet my name is Diff from Rat Rods for Africa a one-man shop in the middle of a forest where I realize my rusty dreams so in the previous video I stripped the Nissan mini truck got the cab off load bin all the body parts to expose the essence um, I've hauled in the nose clip or the front piece and now I'm going to try it on the chassis here for the first time to see how it's going to line up so here it goes, let's see All right, so here was the first try. We got huge clearance here at the moment. Looks like an off-road truck. It's not what I want. Um, and I'll show you the reason why it's sitting like that at the moment. So the inner fender is fouling the steering box. So the, what do you call it, front piece can't drop down more. So one of the first things I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna have to cut out here on the inner fender to clear the steering box. You can see the whole thing is sitting skew at the moment because <laughs> that steering box is holding it up on that side. This side is a little closer to what we're aiming for. Nice little street truck. Um, something like that more or less but we can see that the whole nose clip needs to move back more so that the wheel can sit in the center of the arch. But it's getting tight here in front of the engine. Um, I can't use the original radiator support for my radiator because the fan is already in that line. So I'm going to have to put the radiator in there. I need to, probably need to get rid of that. And I still need to move the nose to the back some more. So yeah, it's quite tight in here. See, so there's also a cross member in the bottom. If you look carefully. It looks like it might might want to fell the crank pulley. So looking backwards from the front, you can see that this cross member is actually pretty much touching the crank pulley and it still needs to go back. If I can drop here, it will probably clear the pulley and it can go in underneath. Um, so yeah, I need to cut there to get, provide clearance for the steering box. And these brackets on the frame, and I have to cut them off as well. Hey, look here. Got some rocks wedged in here, some stones. <laughs> Thinking they're gonna go along for a free ride. And just looking at it some more, the radiator is gonna have to sit about in here somewhere, <coughs> underneath this. So I think, I mean, this is all pretty much bashed up. I don't have bonnet anyway. Um, in South Africa, a wood is called a bonnet. So I think I'm just going to cut all of this away as well, so I can get access in there. I'm not going to need it. So let me get this off again, so I can do some surgery. I might actually have to remove this cross member completely 
But uh, then I've got nothing tying these two fenders together, so I'm just going to keep it for now and we'll see where we go. So while I've got this hanging here, I might as well do a little bit of bush mechanic panel beating. What's this with this new? I think that's good enough. Those free riders, they didn't like all this hammering, so they fell out. <laughs> so on closer inspection, I saw that this piece here can be unbolted, except uh, <laughs> ungrinded would be a better word. That's exactly what I did, because all these bolts were rusted solid. But now it's loose, so I can take it off. And let's see, because with a little bit of luck my radiator would be able to fit in right here. Yes, it does. Awesome. That's going to have to be the position for the radiator, except I need to drop it down quite a bit more. Which means I have to cut out this piece of plate down here. Um, I'm going to leave this in for now. I might cut it out later. Right, so I've got some very rough cuts going here. Got the radiators kind of going in. I think I must now first go and check it again on the chassis. Just to see where we're at. Yes, it's better now. I've got my um, wheel basically in the center of the wheel arch. Same this side. Wheel is more or less in the center of the wheel arch. This could maybe move back a little bit more. But this side is too high now. Because I'm still fouling. Here's the front view. So you can see it sitting all skew. Because now on the left hand side the inner fender is catching right there. So I can't drop down more. So yeah, I need to do a little bit more surgery. So yes, I know it's all skew and all that, but at least you can see that it's fitting nicely around the engine. I can re uh, retain the inner fenders, it's clearing pretty much everywhere. Got clearance here by the branch or the header. So that's cool, this side looking pretty good. Oops! Inner fender is tight against the alternator, yeah? We can just create a dent in the fender with a big hammer <laughs> to get a little more of extra clearance here. So it's not the end of the world. So if you're wondering why I'm not putting on the cab first, it's because I don't really know it's for an aft location yet. Um, the most critical thing is that the <coughs> excuse me that the wheel fits into the wheel arch nicely. So it's important for me to place this first, also needs to clear the engine and the radiator and all the rest of it. But once I know the position of this fore and aft, which is pretty much where it's at now, it needs to drop some, but that's pretty much the fore and aft position. So now I know where my cab needs to fit to tie in with it. 
So the inner fender here is starting to work out nicely. It's almost sitting on the frame right there. It's fouling the pipes here a little bit. I can just cut that. And then maybe I'll give it a little bit more clearance, something like that. And then yeah, I think I'll just smooth clean it up a little bit and maybe I'm drawing upside down. That's a bit difficult, eh? Okay, I'll do something like this. Now you're getting the idea. This line is supposed to be nice and parallel to the frame. I don't know if it's currently is because I'm looking at it upside down. And then I'll do the same thing here on the left hand side and cut it maybe something like that. Remove this. <coughs> Excuse me, remove this. And because it's fouling right there, once I've got this removed, this will drop down and go and sit on the frame rail. So I need to take it off one more time. <laughs> Any guesses as to how many times it will be on and off, on and off? I tell you, without my overhead beam crane hoist contraption, I would be dead in the water. It would not be possible to do this. Some clearance for that alternator, please. Maybe that will do the trick. It's always important to just grind the rusty metal for the earth clamp so them earth juices can flow nicely. A little bit more cutting here for the radiator. I think now is a good time to straighten some of these pieces. That support there is quite mashed up. So I think I'm just going to take it off quickly and straighten it up a bit. And life's too short to be struggling with these old rusty bolts. It's ridiculous. I'm just going to grind them out. <laughs> so this bracket is actually supposed to be straight. I'm going to attack it with a hammer. Much better. Not perfect, but then it's not meant to be. It's just a bloody rat boss after all. Well, so while I'm at it, I suppose I might as well sort out this mangled business here. I actually wonder if I shouldn't just take out the whole grill. No, I think not. If I take this grill off, then everything <laughs> falls apart. Um, just, this is good enough, eh? I can just fiddle a bit with it, yeah? And just not actually so bad. Now I'm just going to leave it in place. I might just give it a tack there because there's a crack in there, but that's not looking too bad. This bottom one I can bend down a little bit maybe. And then this one just needs a, a few bolts. And there we go. No man, that is perfect. <laughs> I flipped it over now so I can see what's going on in the bottom here. So this is the plate that sits below the grill. Yeah, it's not so <laughs> in such good nick. It's a bit mashed up and bashed up. Um, I've already cut it here because the radiator sits in this position. But the mounting brackets on my chassis sits here. And I'd like to use them, so I think I'm just going to get rid of this piece of plate and then we'll see where we go from there. There we go. <laughs> Not too much holding these two fenders together anymore. <laughs> I welded up some cracks. Some of the tabs were broken off, so I've replaced them. There were quite a few missing bolts, so I've replaced bolts and added bolts. 
Um, the intention is not at all to get this thing perfect. I just want it strong and rigid. I want to retain the original patina. And I really don't care if it's a little skew <laughs> and warped. <laughs> no, there's not anything wrong with your vision. It is moving around a little bit because it's hanging from the roof. So I'm not trying to take out the dents perfectly. I really would like to keep this lovely patina. So I'm just getting the worst of the dents out. It's a little bit here and there, but for me that is perfectly good enough. <laughs> I love it. And one more time. <laughs> Yeah, that reminds me <laughs> of my piano teacher nearly half a century ago. One more time. She finally gave up on me. It's freaking amazing that you can remember something like that. That must have had quite a, a damaging effect on me for the rest of my life. <laughs> This roof beam here yeah, sits at about a five degree angle. So to go uphill, I've got this little pulley system with this piece of rope. Yeah, it works quite well, what do you think? I don't want to spread any false rumors or anything, but I think we're pretty much there. It's level more or less, it's more or less at the right height. I think it can probably go down a little bit more. But um, I think uh, it's a working point. A point of departure. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting somewhere. So let's have a look at some of the other views quickly. Just that you can be with me on this. <laughs> okay, so here's the view from dead ahead. <laughs> from the front. Um, you can see that it's more or less level now. Uh, the grill here yeah, is a bit bashed up and the fact that I can see the frame or the chassis down here, I don't like that too much. Um, but yeah, I'm looking here and it needs to drop maybe another inch or so. So I also think when I take it off again, I need to do a little bit of straightening and panel beating and fine tuning up here. I beat some rust. Um, the wheel is pretty nicely lined up in the wheel arch here. Um, you could argue that it might have to move forward for maybe an inch at most. But I think it's pretty damn close. Um, the clearance here, I think that could be a little bit less. Of course it's also going to depend on the tire size. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's keep in mind that I've got no money in the budget for other tires. So it would have been great if we could fit some other rims and tires. Let's just play a little bit. I have these wheels that I did not buy because I got them through a barter deal. This year Booba used to sit on the front of the Pajero and I have now swapped or traded it for these four wheels. They have a PCD that fits a Jackie suspension, 17 inch rims. I need them for a future project. I'm happy with the deal. Unfortunately, they are five stud, uh, so they're not going to fit. Damn! Makes a huge difference, eh? Does look better than uh, those rusty white ones. Unfortunately, they don't fit, eh? So to make them fit, I would need to make up an adapter, which means, uh, yeah, getting some machining done. We'll have to custom make them. It's going to cost a bit of money. Mm. Allow me to dream. I'll take this one off. 
Look at this. I've got these rims. Yeah. And they actually fit. 15 by 10J. Freaking wide. Wow, that looks awesome, eh? That is killer. Whoa, I wish I could put them on, but <laughs> getting tires to go on, yeah. I mean, the four tires will cost more than the whole build. So that's not currently an option either. Damn, maybe one day. Or maybe I can find some cheap ones somewhere. Very cheap ones somewhere. I mean, look at this, I've got four of these. Look how wide they are, 10J. Wow. Oh well. Back to reality. Back to reality. So we'll just have to live with these puppies for a while. Let's keep building and see where we go. And this little Nissan radiator fits in perfectly here now. Like it's meant to be. <laughs> and these were the rusty bits that was removed and cut out. And it will now go and join <laughs> my scrap metal pile. The ever growing <laughs> heap of rusty bits and pieces. Some of it is real crap. Some of it can still be used stretching off into <laughs> the distance. So I got it off one more time, do some further fine tuning. And I had to break out a sweater. Winter is heading our way slowly but surely down here in the southern hemisphere. Whilst those of you who's up in the north can look forward to some upcoming t-shirt weather. <laughs> Listen, you oaks, thanks very much, much for following my carrying ons out here in a forest in darkest Africa. <laughs> I will see you. In the next video, when we get the cab up on that chassis for the first time, that's going to be exciting. I'll see you then. Have a good one.